Hello everybody! We're live! It's Wednesday! We are playing Star Trek Adventures Shadows and Starlight. Um, we are Massive Damage Adventures, usually a one-shot actual play podcast. Today, we're doing a Twitch stream again. I am Merrick Moyer, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be the GM, as well as Captain Fenn of the USS Artemis. Um, as this Shadows and Starlight campaign is a West Marches style game, we have a different roster of players today, with the exception of Alex. Thank you for returning. You're welcome. <laughs> so, let's do a little bit of introductions. Hayden, do you want to take it away and introduce your character? Sure. All right. My character's name is Andrew. Uh, he is an android. He is a uh, pacifist. Um, mediation and uh, support android. So he serves on the uh, the ship as a counselor. He is, yeah, very adept in communication and uh, medical things. Excellent. And Kim. All right. I am Itar. I am a. Uh, half Klingon, half human. I grew up on a starship, been Starfleet my whole life. Um, this is kind of everything to me. My my passions are uh, being in command and flying ships. So it's kind of what I'm after. I'm here for the big chair. I'm uh, going for the yeah. Yeah, going for the lead. You're the first officer on the ship. <laughs> okay, Alex, uh, please reintroduce. Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, pronouns are she, they. I am playing our chief medical officer, Lieutenant Misra Bars, um, a trill, uh, fiery redhead who's ready to uh, not engage in fisticuffs. <laughs> 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 All right, Ross. Uh, I'm Ross, pronouns he, him. I will be playing Lieutenant Junior Grade Garak. Uh, Garak is a Klingon, and he's the inventory and resource manager for this starship. Uh, so he specializes in resource analytics and uh, procurement. All right, and Shreya. Hi, I am Shreya, pronouns she, her. Uh, I am going to be playing Lieutenant Junior Grade Tana Sul. I am a Bajoran scientist, so I am the science officer. I specialize in subspace communications and linguistics. Excellent. Um, okay, so welcome uh, to this particular crew on the USS Artemis for tonight. Let's talk a little bit about some uh, announcements and stuff. As always, we are sponsored by Roll20. Um, something cool about Roll20, which is a virtual tabletop at roll20.net, if you don't know. Um, they just released their Dune uh, package. So you can go ahead and get um, the compendium information and a whole bunch of pre-made art and tokens and stuff for Dune uh, using... Uh, a modified but similar version of the 2d20 momentum system that we're using tonight. So Dune, also published by Modifius. Um, cool. Ooh, if you get it today or tomorrow, you get the Game Master's kit free. Ooh. That's uh, a steal of a deal. It is. Uh, <laughs> just announced as well on Roll20 is that uh, on August 2nd, a ton of official D&D &D content is going permanently down in price. So if you wanted to get Ghosts of Saltmarsh, Descent into Avernus, Tyranny of Dragons, Dragon Heist, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, or any of those things, all of the prices are reducing beginning of August. So, cool stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, okay, so we're going to play for an hour. We're going to take a little break. And at that break, we are going to do three giveaways. So today we are giving away three $10 gift cards to Modifius Entertainment, one $25 gift card to Monty Cook Games. So, um... The ten dollars to Modifius, unfortunately, that won't get you your roll twenty Dune, but it will get you, you know, a physical copy of Dune. Where's mine? Ooh, I got the uh, 
the Ooh. House of Trades Collector's Edition. Ooh, Ooh she a fancy yeah. girl. So you can put 10 bucks towards that with that. And Monty Cook Games, um, they've got a ton of cool stuff on their web store that you can get. They did just launch a new Kickstarter called uh, The Devil Made Us Do It for a game called Stealing Stories for the Devil. If you want to play a mashup of time travel, um, heist, reality shaping in a uh, prepless game out of a box. Kickstarter's going now. This gift card will not help you towards that, but, you know, you could use it towards shipping when it comes out. Um, what else do we got? Uh, I will mention the giveaways for next week, which are always going to be super good. The third episode is going to be real big because we're also giving away one month of uh, pro membership on Roll20 and one copy of Monty Cook Games' The Darkest House. So check that out next week. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Okay, those are the announcements. Now watch our super cool intro video and we'll be right back. Right, we're back again. Hello, hope you enjoyed that. And that music was by Hayden Lister. This is the first time we've actually had you on our podcast or show, but we've used your music yeah. for years. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, welcome and thank yeah. you. Been wanting to forever, but just been so busy. So, I mean, life. that is that is life. But we're happy you're here now. Okay, let's start. After the successful rescue of the crew of the Gargani, the USS Artemis received additional orders from Narendra Station. Several ships have gone missing while passing through Shackleton Sector 0304. You are tasked to investigate and provide aid as required. After several days of scanning the sector, the Artemis discovered a strange anomaly, a darkness or hole in space. Sensors can't scan it, except to say that there is nothing there. It appears stationary. Captain Fenn has ordered a probe to be launched. So, once again, do we have anybody on the sensors? Who's got... I think I'd be on the con. You'd be on the con, all right. Captain, is it Kitar? Kitar. Okay. I'm like, Kitar Kahitar? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's kind of like hey, like like hey, but you know, hey, tar, hey yeah. tar. It's very Klingon. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so the captain, uh, Captain Fenn, a very sort of like stiff Vulcan man, will stand uh, a couple of feet behind uh, Kitar and say, "Hold position, probe away, status." And uh, I think we'll probably go to. Sciences, then. Makes that, sense. That would be uh, Lieutenant Tana. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get to do our first roll. Oh, okay. Is, yeah, so that's going to be <laughs> a, a reason plus science roll. Reason plus science. I'm good at both of those things. Mm -hmm. And it's very good. The probe reduces the difficulty of scanning this phenomenon by two steps. So normally the difficulty would be four. It's going to be two. 
Okay, so that's the complication range? No, um, that's or, no. just what okay. we're going to count afterward. Uh, Got it. Yep. So you're going to roll two dice. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have any momentum right now. And actually, If it's too difficulty at this point, that means she needs two successes? Correct. Uh, or a critical success on one die. That's Which, right. if you're good at that, that is... So let's, let's get rid of this, and let's move to the bridge and get a little bit of a, a visual. Yeah, okay. So, oh, Ooh. yeah. Roll 20, there's the bridge. Let's get rid of uh, last week's characters. Ooh. Get him out get of here. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Misra is still on the bridge? Uh, we'll say yes. All right. Uh, Ensign Barnaby is going to be at the back. Uh, Lieutenant Joya, she's working in um, seven forward seven. right now, we'll say. Um, so let's pull uh, Commander Kitar and Tanasul. Let's put you at a science station back there. Okay. And uh, is anybody else on the bridge currently? I'm probably not on the bridge. I'm Unless probably also not on it. Okay. Andrew and Garak um, will not be currently in this scene. Also, we can see right here momentum and threat. We'll move that a little bit more onto the screen. Yeah. And then let's reset that. That goes back to 10 for me and 0 for you. Ooh, that seems that's... unfair. <laughs> uh, I mean, you all have one point of determination, though. That's your super special thing. Um, I'll explain it right now. You can spend a point of determination when a task that you're doing is in line with one of your values. And what that does is it adds a die to your roll, your pool, that has already rolled a one. So it's a way to buy two successes immediately. Oh. But let's, let's go back to this. Um, you are rolling reason plus reason science. science. Do you have any focuses that would apply? Um... Oh. I don't think so. I've got subspace communications, linguistics, psychiatry, anthropology, negotiations, and empathy. Yeah, not going to help <laughs> this particular time, um, but the ship will help. So anytime okay. you're using an action with the ship, the ship aids. So in this case, it's going to be uh, sensors and science. And when you aid... You roll a single d20, and if the ship succeeds, it basically gives you a bonus momentum. Not a bonus success, but a bonus momentum. Okay. Okay. So, let's see how the ship does. Hey, ship got one. So if you succeed, we're going to get one. Okay. So here are your options. You can just roll your two dice. Right. Or you can give me threat, and you could roll three <laughs> dice. What do you guys think? <laughs> I feel like you guys should weigh in on this too. <laughs> yeah, meta player weigh in, absolutely. <laughs> so the crit rating is still just at one. You've got to roll a one to crit, right? That's correct. All right. But you only need um, one success. No, she will still need two successes. The ship oh, has I a see. momentum. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. but how is the difficulty? Right now, two. Which yeah. Means, yeah, so oh, two. So, so, sorry, sorry not the, not the difficulty. Your target. Mm, yeah. What is the sum of your oh. science reason? Uh, fifteen. That's pretty good odds. Pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. I don't know. Do I just uh, so you, you get... risk it without the threat? I will say just go for it. Like, so the what? momentum gives an extra die, though. So that's three dice then, or no? So the momentum is added into the pool afterwards. Oh, for so later. That you can spend yeah. later. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna roll. Let's go for it. I'll click the button. Clicking the button. Hey. Success. Two successes. All right. So nice. we are going to um, increase your momentum by one. Um. The probe shoots out towards this darkness in space, and you see it enter. The scans go up all the way until the very edge of it, and then it completely stops uh, transmitting information. 
and you look down at the console and you can see a clear outline of where normal space hits this area, but everything else is blank. There doesn't appear to be any dimension to this area of space. It's just a blackness. So you can spend this momentum immediately to obtain information. It basically gives you a higher quality of success, and you could ask a question. Or you can save it in your pool for later rolls. Ooh, I feel like this could be very valuable information to have right away. Um, if you guys are okay with it, I think we spend it. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You succeeded, yeah. why don't we go for it? <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, all right. So we spend one momentum to obtain information. And uh, you don't get any additional information from the probe. But what you do get is a, a common hit in the Federation database. It does appear that a phenomenon like this has been uh, experienced before by another crew in Starfleet. On uh, Stardate 42193.6, the USS Enterprise um, encountered a uh, similar phenomenon that seemed to be uh, a change in space-time created by an alien intelligence named Nadilam. I'm just going to say I relay that to the captain because there's no way I can repeat all of that. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so the, uh, the captain says, hmm, interesting. I'm not familiar with that particular report. Um, helm hold position. Let's Bling. get a little bit more information before we proceed. And so... How does that... Stardate compared to our current stardate? Uh, it's about six years prior. Okay. Um, so you hold position and you're able to look at this file a little bit more closely. And you get a couple more details. Captain Picard um, moved closer to the event and then it engulfed them once inside they uh, were attacked by a Romulan warbird that appeared to be um, uh, an illusion they saw their sister ship uh, appear which made no sense uh, they beamed aboard and uh, found strange spatial troubles one crew was un uh, one crew member was unfortunately killed in the action. Uh, Captain Picard notes that uh, when they finally did make contact with Nagilam, it was a creature wholly lacking in any value of humanoid life. It wasn't alive. It was a different form of life. It appeared as a mm -hmm. massive face in space. Hmm. So. so what you're saying is that this is very dangerous yeah <laughs> I'm getting let's go in <laughs> wait, wait 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 does the report say how the Enterprise got out or what yeah. the conclusion yeah, was yeah that's what I would like to know too <laughs> it does um, Nagilam was a scientist and was studying humanoid life they wanted to see all of the various aspects of death that humanoid life could sustain and relayed to Captain Picard that this would probably only take one third to one half of the crew of the Enterprise uh, Captain Picard's response was to set the ship to self-destruct 20 seconds before the uh, ship exploded, um, real space was suddenly visible from within the cloud, 
and they were able to escape. So can we see this thing, or is it just our sensors picking it up? You can see it as basically just a big black patch um, up on the... Like, it, we could, like, go around it? You could. And, like, measure it and readings? Absolutely. At this point, yes, the captain will say, it is a very strange situation. Suggestions? So what, what's the shape of it? Is it like spherical or is it like oblong or what's the, uh, it, what are the... Um, from the initial scans that you've done, it is uh, irregular. Do we have any NPCs on the bridge that I could voice a suggestion through? Absolutely. Let's make one. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you're going to have let me let me create a quick support. Oh, I used a capital, which uh, is a no-no for this display oh. bot. Here you go. Use the robots. This is a uh, human woman named Ella Suzuki, who uh, <laughs> her talent is the spirit of discovery, and she seems to be a science officer, and engineering. Uh, hey. Highest in, yeah, yeah. So let's. Uh, you could for a quick second play Ella Suzuki. Um, Ella Suzuki is going to pipe up and say, uh, "Captain, should we scan the area to see if we can recognize any sort of uh, warp or other thruster signatures entering this space from the area around it?" But not coming out anywhere else. Excellent suggestion, mm -hmm. Suzuki. Science, if you please. And I guess we'll have another roll uh, from the sensors. Okay. Uh, let's go with the ship to help again. Where's the ship? Whoop. Ship got one success. And so you go ahead. Oh, job, um, job. difficulty here. Uh, the probe's not out there anymore. We're just going to have this at a difficulty one. Okay. So it's reason and science again? Yes, it is. Okay. I got two. Boom. Nice. Momentum. Okay. So um, you got... Uh, effectively, three successes because you succeed, counting the ship. Uh, difficulty of one, which means two momentum in there. And it is very clear immediately that several um, uh, warp core exhausts have gone into this darkness. Can we tell if they're recent? Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, you could spend one momentum to uh, uh, Do determine that. that. <laughs> and yes, please. Yes. They uh, spread out over the course of a couple of weeks, but the most recent one was only a couple of hours ago. Okay, um, Captain, it looks as if there have been ships that have entered. Captain, have there been any Federation vessels coming this way other than us? Yes. The USS Bellerophon was in this area and has gone missing. I believe our only course of action is to enter. Do you concur, Commander? Only way one one way to find out what's happening in there. We have to go in. All stations, yellow alert. We're heading in. Okay. So the USS Artemis begins to uh, head towards the the strange phenomenon. And it doesn't appear to have any sort of reaction to you as you move over its its uh, edge, but you enter this dark area of space, and from within you see this sort of like nimbus-like blue outline, and no stars. But ahead of you are several ships, all holding position. So let's switch you here, and let's do, whoop, ah, for 
the uh, people watching, I made that a little bit bigger this time. There we go. So, you can see yourselves as the uh, Federation ship on the right hand side. There's a Klingon ship ahead. Registry reads the IKS Coronar. Also, the USS Bellerophon. And a ship of unknown hull configuration, all seeming to float. Um, no activity. Can we Would scan them for life? Um, yes, that would, um, once again be scanning, so, Shreya, you get to do all the rolling today. I'm just, I am the dice roller. I am one with the dice. I mean, you're doing a good job, so. <laughs> we can well, let's, let's, uh... Um, so let's do, uh, all of them rolling in one, and, uh, let's have it be a difficulty two. The ship is... Was that new? Yeah, that's new. That's one. Ship's got another one. Hey, ship! Good job. Ship's the real MVP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, you got more success than it had. <laughs> Just watch, it's gonna fail now. Ooh, my kitty's awake. Shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Curse the dice. Okay, uh, is it reason and science again? It is. It's just the reason and science show. Yep. Okay, um... Just wondering, we have that, we have momentum as well. I don't know, I've been doing well rolling, but do I risk it? <laughs> Taking one momentum to, to get an extra roll I think is worth it at this point, just because yeah. we don't want to... Plus, I mean, any additional successes we get yeah. get turned back into momentum anyway, right? Totally. That's true. Sure. Okie doke. I'm gonna I'm gonna use one of the momentum, and then I get three dice, right? Yep. Okay. That is okay. correct. My kitty is playing with the mouse now. No, nope, come here. <laughs> come here, you. Hello, teeny kitten. Our, our so viewing small. numbers just skyrocket. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, Belmont. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I'm rolling. Oh. All right. So one success. The difficulty was two. Unfortunately, um, there's too much interference. You're not able to uh, get a clear reading. And um, the captain says, open hailing frequencies. Um, wide band. Uh, let's have... Uh... Let's have uh, Suzuki do it. You want? We'll just have you be an ensign, ensign Suzuki. Uh, open hailing frequencies. <laughs> hailing frequencies opened. This is Captain Fenn of the USS Artemis to all ships within the phenomenon. Do you read us? Respond. No response. Recommendations. Be a trap. Could certainly be a trap. And I... these are the only ships we see? There's nothing else in here? These are the only things you see in here. Is there a way to get a reading on the USS Bellerophon to see if it um, shows the same sort of like security signatures as a legitimate? Uh, Starfleet ship or if there's any kind of indiscrepancies that would make it seem like this is either an illusion or a fraud um, as far as you can tell from regular scanning it does appear to be completely genuine if you'd like more information you would need to be closer with like I mean on the ship um recommend that if we're going to investigate closer, we start with the USS Bellerophon as they're the most likely to be friendly. <laughs> yep. Agreed. And we know they just recently came in, so if there's, you know, people that need to be saved, that would be where they'd be. Very well. Agreed. 
What is the, sorry, the pink thing on the screen? That is a ship of unknown hull configuration. It seems to have strange pink crystals growing across its hull. Anyway, if we can tell how long these ships have been here, like if that one that's growing things has been here longer than the others? No way to tell from uh, outside. Okay. That's my assumption. Hmm. Put that out there. Commander Do we know from the warp signatures that we saw going in here um, about the timeline for when maybe the Klingon ship came in? Because I assume that we'd be somewhat familiar with what a Klingon warp signature would be like anyway. Yeah, I would say the Klingon warp signature was one of the ones within the last couple of days. The most recent one, it's unclear. Um, in our current time frame, the Federation is friendly with the Klingons? Yes. Uh, they are partnered in Narendra Station. It's actually half Federation, half Klingon. Wonderful. Okay. Happy times. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, the captain will say, Commander Kitar, uh, select your members for an away team. Full compliment, if you please. Right. Um, I'll definitely need a medical officer in case there are wounded. Absolutely, sir. And some science officers as well. Um, forgetting our names here. Let's see. Lieutenant Mazer Bars be indispensable in the situation. I believe Andrew would uh, be helpful as well. Um, and we've got Garak, our science science officer. Science. Uh, inventory and resources. Inventory and resources. Well, you like dangerous missions? Let's do it. And of course, our science officer, who in fact found this entire <laughs> anomaly, I, I believe uh, she should come along. I would be honored. Excellent. Assemble at the transporter room and head to the Bellerophon. All right. right Everybody away, goes to transporter room right. one. You meet Andrew um, and you head there. Where in the ship would you like to target for your transporter as you speak to the chief? Maybe we should start with the bridge. That was my thought. Oops. All right. Worked out well last time. <laughs> right. Energizing, and you head off to the USS Bellerophon, and it's going to be all dark, because guess what? I didn't have dynamic lighting last week, but I've got dynamic lighting this week. Moving oh, no. it together. <laughs> and Misra, that is five. There we go. Let's see how good that looks on. Whoop. You know what? Doesn't look great. <laughs> I've got to learn to uh, to center my maps a little bit more so that it looks great on uh, on Twitch. <laughs> Down in the bottom left corner. You gotta explore more. <laughs> so, uh, oh. go ahead. I was gonna say, as, as we're getting ready to uh, for, for transport and everything uh, uh, coming in, I, I would say uh, thank you, Commander Kitar, for your recommendation of my assistance on this mission. I would be most, most pleased to assist you all. And just so we are all clear, as dangerous a situation as this may be, if we all work together, I believe we will be able to achieve success. If anyone has any stressful re reactions or responses to anything that occurs, do not hesitate to speak to me. I'm more than qualified to uh, assist you with any particular um, concerns that you might have. <laughs> I am so no, glad no. that you're with us. That is that is most appreciated. I am glad that I'm with us as well. <laughs> Excellent. Any um, other words, or shall we be on our way? All right. And you beam over to the bridge of the Bellerophon. Its shields are down, and so there's no challenge there. Uh, you arrive on the bridge. Um, picture Voyager's bridge. Uh, it's an intrepid class. Uh, not exactly as appearing here. 
Um, view screen is dark. Uh, doors are closed. No evidence of the crew. Is power on? Power is on, though everything. Am I able to, to interface with standby? Am I able to interface with the ship and see if I can find out what the most recent communications that were sent out were? Absolutely. Um, so smart. That sounds Idea, like a, uh, a control security or control science. Okay, I think science would be what I'd be. Yeah. All right. So I'm going. I'm going to walk over to the console and say, um, if. Uh, I will attempt to interface with this uh, with the ship and to determine what the most recent communications were. I appreciate your patience while I accomplish this. All right, I will. So that is uh, reason and science. You said uh, we're going to go control science. Control science. Okay. Because yeah, you're you're trying to learn the other system. It's only going to be a difficulty one because it's another Federation system. It's pretty understood, but it's sure. Yeah, doing it kind of quick. Okay. And uh, all right. So I hit this. Hey. Hey. What did we get? So one. Success. Excellent. All right. So um, I interface with the console. You do. And let's get that. Oh. A giant com badge appears. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> dodge. Um, what have I unleashed? You you interface with the ship, and you can see that the most recent communications were distress signals. Um, but the last one cuts off mid-sentence. Okay. Good to that know. That doesn't bode well. What, um, when was that was last one? saying? Yeah. Uh, the last one was several hours ago, and it was saying... Um, uh, we have been unable to access portions of the ship. Please send support immediately. Cuts off. So were they hailing other parts of the ship? Or were they sending a frequency to attempting to, to reach out? They were attempting to reach off of the ship. It was sent outwards. Okay. Okay. It appears that the most recent communication was uh, was cut partway through. We It has been several hours since then. We should be looking around and investigating to see if there are still uh, crew hiding out somewhere on the ship. They said in the communication that they couldn't reach parts of the ships. Yes, they were unable to reach other as other regions of the ship. Did say which parts? Did it? It did not. The communication seemed hurried and rushed. The individual who was sending out the signal seemed to be in a state of emotional distress. Hmm. That's completely understandable. You... Indeed. Can I do a... Is, is it possible to scan for life now that we're on the ship? Uh, sure. I'm going to say that that is uh, not a roll. You scan around and um, ship sensors appear completely confused by the interior um, of the ship. Just like they can't make heads or tails of their own ship. What if we pull out our tricorder and try and use that? Is that getting mixed signals too? Hmm. Um, so if you pull out your tricorder and scan like that, you get uh, a clear reading of the bridge, um, but that's it. Yeah, okay. Mm. Is anybody okay. here? Nobody here? Nobody four here. life signals, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have four life signs. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> I think I would probably keep my tricorder out though. Just just to have it out and like if we start going into different, yeah. different rooms, I want to have it out to get any sort of reading right yeah. away. If if we are going to be exploring this this vessel, the potential is uh due to the uh inconclusive scans, it seems that it's possible there may be um environmental hazards uh, in other aspects of the ship. I would be happy to to put myself first as I am, because of my nature, I am immune to many of the uh, things that it would be more harmful to organic material like yourselves. Agreed. If anyone's going to go anywhere, it should be yourself and I. More resistant than the rest, rest of you. Likely. This definitely sounds does anyone else has, to me. Does anyone else has redundant organs? <laughs> I have no 
Garak <laughs> is. Uh, I do have redundant systems, though. Garak is a Klingon as well. Oh, right. Sorry, yeah. I missed that. Perfect. I don't like to think of any of you as redundant. <laughs> um, <laughs> would I, I do have redundant systems? Would I be able to check the ship's records to see any sort of like supply movement, replicator usage, power usage, anything uh, that would signify that there are people on board using systems and resources? Mm -hmm. Um, You can check into that. The system is sort of unlocked. Uh, You go and you begin to tap into some commands and then every console goes dark. Wasn't helpful. Lovely. Mm-hmm. It seems we may have to do this manual. Mm-hmm. We can't establish any sort of presence on the computer here and like have this be a headquarters because nothing. The ship's not communicating with itself, right? Correct. We need so. to stick together. Okay. Okay. So there are well. turbo lifts. Um, three of them here on the bridge, captain's ready room. And then there are doors that lead off into deck one. I think first we should check the captain's ready room just to see if there's anything in there that might help us in our search. What's going on? We won't spend too much time. There's nothing interesting. You check. You look at it. Okay. Are the turbo lifts working? The turbo lifts do appear to be working. Right. Suggestions? Uh, Commander, may I suggest that we have phasers ready and set to stun, just in case? This is a little weird. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, everything seems a little too directed. Where would you like to go? All right. Do we want to look um, anywhere else on this deck just to see if anyone else went any went out of there, or should we be going to other floors? Well, well, there's only well. a ready room and three turbo lifts, right? So, uh, there what are, if we start? There's a door right here uh, that heads off. Oop, is that not pinging? Oh, that's why. Uh, there it is. There it goes. That door leads <laughs> off the bridge. I was on the wrong layer. What if okay, we so started we with the ready room to see if the captain left any kind of logs or anything like that about what was going on or. Uh, anything more recent than the last transmission for some reason. No additional information. Here's, here's a question. So we know when the signature came into the into the field, yes? Yeah. Do we have like a time frame on that? A couple of hours. And we also know when the last signal was. Is there any way to determine what the, the timeline was between those two events, between them coming in and that transmission being sent? Yeah, um, about six hours that is okay. unaccounted for. Okay, good to know. All right, so there we was... should be able to find people here. I would think if this was a full ship, and in six hours they're gone, they need to be somewhere. Full complement about this... 300. 300. It seems strange that the the, the uh, con con was in, it abandoned like this, but we should uh, we should look to see if people have. Hold up somewhere else. So, I have a bad feeling about this. So would you like to take That's a- understandable <laughs> given the circumstance, but I'm sure we'll be able to pull up through, through this all right. <laughs> would you like to take a turbo lift to another deck, or would you like to uh, check in deck one where there would normally be a conference room? Yeah, so it's conference no, let's room. Let's do that first. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's up here on the top right. Uh, are we having Andrew go first? Yep, I will. I will go for it. All right. I will. I will determine if it is safe for the uh, for the organic beings to proceed. And I will go right in. Okay. Thank you. And so, you open the door, and there is an immediate uh, sort of backlash. Your your sensors feel of of warmed air. A couple of cent. Um, uh, a couple of degrees above the uh, the room that you're in. And as the door opens, you see that the lights are lower, and you're looking into what appears to be a Klingon machine shop. This is extremely <laughs> unexpected. From the Federation <laughs> ship, right? Yep. 
Okay. <laughs> there seems oh. to be some sort of merging of this ship with the Klingon ship we saw previously. Oh. Do my sensors determine that the oxygen and everything's good for everyone to breathe in here? They are. It is safe for you all to proceed. All right, I, I come in. Start looking around. So can I see where like the the switch happens? <laughs> yeah, it's right at the door. Like you open the um, the okay. door and you're looking into what appears to be a Klingon ship. All right, I'm going to start investigating, see if there's anything that I can... Okay. Uh, that makes okay. sense of why it's confused. Yeah, it, are it, there any consoles we... in here? There are some consoles in here. Uh, there is another door that appears like it would head back to the uh, to the bridge, but <laughs> appears like it would. I Where mean, is it, it lines gonna... up. <laughs> Can I try to go back through it? <laughs> uh, you want to go through the opposite door, or through? The no, I'll go through the door through? that I just came through. Uh, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm not somewhere else now. Yeah, no, you pass back through that door and back onto the bridge. That's reassuring. Okay. At least the portals are stable. You mean there was another door on the opposite side? <laughs> yes, might go somewhere there's else. another door ah, here. Ah. Okay, well, if any, if everyone else is coming in here, then uh, I'm going to look around in here first, but is there any consoles or anything that I can see in here? Yep. Any uh, signs of life? No, there doesn't appear to be anyone here. Uh, the console hmm. does appear to be security locked out. Can I try to break in? Uh, yes, absolutely. Which okay. uh, would be once again a control security. Okay. Um, Mary, uh, I, I science or security? See. Oh, you can't see at all. No. no, I can't move myself down or anything either. Yeah, I can't. Oh. Move. I'm in a weird room. Yeah. So uh, one of the things is um, uh, the the dynamic lighting walls are built so that you cannot pass through them. Okay. So, uh, I will tell me who is going, like, all the viewers can see this and you can only see where your characters are. Uh, yeah. Tell me who's going on to the, oh. onto the, into the Klingon room and I'll move you over. I'm going. I'm, I'm following my crew. Yeah, everybody is. I trust my crew. All right. Everybody is in there. Does this look like a Klingon bridge? It does not look can like a bridge. Can we tell what room it this is? looks like a machine shop with a sort of secondary system. Oh, right, right, right. Hmm. All right, so, sorry, um, control security or science? Uh, control security... Um, I would say that you could probably use control science in this particular uh, application, and the difficulty is rather hard. It's a three. Okay. Um, would I... Can I get someone to assist me with it? Absolutely. Um, would somebody... Who would like to help? I can try to help. Okay. How do you help? That would be most appreciated. Um, and we have a momentum. I think I want to use it if I can. Oh, wait, wait. Here, here's a, so is part of the difficulty because it's in Klingon? Or... Yeah, I would say that part of that is uh, that it's in Because I do, I do have a specialty in linguistics. Yeah, that's great. So uh, you've got a focus in linguistics. Linguistics. Yeah. So let's say that any um, successes that are less than or equal to your science are doubled. Sure. Okay. Um, is there a way to add that in here? Or oh yeah, focus used. Yes. Okay. There you go. Um, so sorry, Alex. How are you helping? Uh, I can use my focus in cultural studies to kind of help translate. Translate and. Um, better understand the systems sure so that sounds like a mm, probably a reason command so you and go ahead and sorry Alex rolls first with just a single die that's the assistance I rolled two by accident oh, but okay. they're both good <laughs> uh, yeah, oh. we'll, just, we'll just take the first one on the first roll it's fine that's one success okay. so Hayden uh, your difficulty is three. If you succeed, you'll get an additional momentum from Alex's help. And um, can I use a momentum to have three dice? Absolutely. Okay, I will do this. Uh oh. Oof. Um, what did we get? Oh, we got one. Okay. We got one. So I unfortunately, tried. you're not able to um, open up the systems. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Someone who's like, do either myself or Garox, could we use the Klingon systems? It'd be better. Uh, yeah, we could say that you could try uh, the same type role, a uh, control uh, security or science, but the difficulty would only be two because there's like a trait on the scene that's like computers in Klingon. <laughs> um, I don't know if my characters cheat up anymore, but, and I can't figure out how to bring it up. I uh, like took it down so I could see the map. Yeah, so uh, the second thing in the top right is the journal. You click that, and then you go to USS Artemis. Your character sheet should be there. And if you hit the little button, you can uh, detach it so you can move it over. Yeah, so you so can pull it off fun. to a different screen. You can also uh, double click on it, um, like on the name when it's up, and it'll minimize it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. it's a helpful thing that uh, comes up eventually. <laughs> Um, so what am I rolling then? Um, control plus security or science. Control plus security, because my science is terrible. And I get how many dice? Sorry, two? Two dice. We're at and zero momentum. would, would I oh. be assisting or would I just be rolling Boom. separately if this doesn't work? Um, I would say that you go ahead and assist. So Andrew and uh, Dr. Bars have uh, attempted to break into the system and are unable to. So, um, uh, did, of, yep. Did the the um, the momentum that Alex got, did that, does that just disappear? Because being failed? disappears, yeah. Cool. Uh, so Ross, what are you going to do to help? Um, do, 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 do. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know what I could do that's different from what Commander Katar is already doing, other than just be there to sort of like point out the solitaire moves that she didn't necessarily notice, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you could also make a control security or control science and uh, uh, and just roll the single d20 to see if you get the success. I built my character terribly, forgetting that control is used for using computers and technology in every circumstance, which Reason my character should be a lot better at. <laughs> Reason is arguable in uh, something like this. Uh, reason is like the, you know, study and book learning and those sorts of things. And then control is is fine use. I, like, I do get bonuses to reason. Would I be able to use that for computers instead? Uh, yeah, we'll do that going forward as needed. Like, if I can use reason security to try to, like, make sense of, of what Commander Katar is opening up and looking at in the systems and be like, hey... What about this thing? Sure. Awesome. Uh, that is a success. Okay. Um, and so, Commander Kitar, we're doing... Um, what's the roll you want to do? Oh, I, I rolled. Oh, you did. I, oh, I missed Two successes. Roll, control on security. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Two successes. Okay, so you get hey. one momentum and you do succeed. You have access to the Klingon ship's computers. Uh, what do you want to find out? Um, I want to see if I can find out if there's anybody else here, like, on this ship, because I anticipate we are on a different ship than we were on. Yeah. Um, Probably so the Klingon ship. You do a scan for life forms, and it's uh, similar to what you found on the Bellerophon. Uh, nothing here, and a strange sort of mixture of uh, physical appearance on the ship. Everything seems uh, sort of folded in on itself and just off. At which point, as um, the two of you are huddled over the console, I'm going to spend two threat, and there's a sudden roar a monstrously loud sound and we're going to do that's not good oh wait that's not good we don't want that i guess we're gonna go that is that there they're still set on stun but okay mm, 
We're just we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna try it out. Um, because it says blaster battle, but that's not what I wanted. Hey, whatever. We're going with the blaster battle sound. Um, and this large, uh, white-furred, four-armed ape appears on the side. Uh, Commander what? Kitar is the closest, and it reaches up, and it goes to swing at you. You get to go first, though. Uh, what would you like to hey. do? I'm gonna maybe try and, like, I only have a phaser as a weapon, right? Yes. Probably gonna shoot it with the phaser. I mean, that makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> shooting with a phaser is a control security at difficulty two. Um, it's right up in your face, and so the complication range is, um, is the complication range, or is it the difficulty that increases? By one? Difficulty increases by one. The complication range increases when you have a friendly in combat. So it's a three to hit it right now. Okay, so sorry, I'm rolling control and security, and then I have to put the task roll up to three? Uh, no, your uh, task roll is two. You need three successes to hit it. I can only roll two dice, so I need more dice. Uh, what are your focuses? Um, okay. Most of them have to do with flying a ship. Astro navigation, evasive action, helm operations, starship recognition, starship propulsion systems, and shuttlecraft operation. Okay, so nothing for phasers. So, yeah, no. Um, you can succeed if you roll a natural one. Or you can spend some points, or sorry, add some points to threat to uh, buy additional dice. What does adding points to threat do? Um, we don't have any momentum that I can add, right? There yeah. is one momentum. No, oh, yeah. uh, didn't we spend the momentum? No, oh, there is one momentum. There you go. Oh, okay, can I use the momentum to get an extra die then? Yep. Yes. Okay. So then you're at three dice and... Um, I mean, I feel like your value of Glory Hound or maybe something yeah. to prove might reduce the difficulty in this situation as this massive monstrous creature rears up in front of you and you pull your phaser quickly. Oh, sorry. Am I putting anything in the challenge dice? No, not yet. Oh, okay. I think I did that right. I don't think I did that very well. Yeah, you you got it. You got um Okay. So you got one success. So if you want to hit, there is one other thing that we can do. You can spend your determination using one of your values, in this case glory hound or something to prove. Something to prove seems to fit. And you could re-roll your two zeros. Oh. Uh, I want to do that. Okay, cool. So now just roll two more dice. And so we've got one success. We're gonna roll these. Hey, oh! three successes. Okay. <laughs> oh, you done proved it, girl. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down on your character sheet to phaser type two, and just click right there. It's gonna uh, roll your security plus weapon damage. Nice. Okay. So we got one. Effect, effect, zero, 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 one, two, effect. So uh, it's rolling six mean? dice. Yeah, it's rolling six dice. They're these like fancy little challenge oh. dice. So they've got two blank okay. sides, which are the zeros. What you've done is you've rolled uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. Ooh. Uh, with three effects. Uh, your effects. In this case, aren't gonna do so much. We're just gonna count them as one damage. And so you fire your phaser right into this creature's face and it's, Rah! and then it just disappears. Everybody else saw that, right? Sorry, sure what was that is. question? Oh yeah, there we go. Uh... All right. So it just disappeared like, into thin air? Yeah. Not like a transporter, not like it disintegrated or whatnot. It just was there, rearing, and then disappears. Was it like okay. really terrible 80s uh, sci-fi <laughs> movie effects too, where yeah. like 
ah, and then it just kind of like did a, like a weird <laughs> shimmery like, fade in the back. Like uh, something just moves like a little bit because they didn't yes. have the camera precisely in the same place. <laughs> Are there phaser marks on the wall behind where it was? No, it did. It did clearly hit it. It contacted. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it was physical. We scan the area where it disappeared to see if there's any lingering traces. Tricorder comes out. Um, anybody who's scanning can go ahead and make a control science. Oh, heck yeah, I'm scanning. Do I recognize what that thing was? Um, yeah, it looked like... Oh, I think I... Does that mean I crit if I got it? Is that critical? Yeah, crit. Nice. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that is two successes. Um... Roll 20 likes me. I like roll 20. We're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looked... Kind of similar to a uh, Mugato. Um, but they only have two arms and a horn on the top of their head. Hmm. And do I do I know if that... Um, I mean, th would that creature have any place on a Klingon ship? Or would it possibly... Okay. No, that's a very strange creature to have appeared yeah. here. Um, okay. And so with yeah, that's the... Not normal. With the two scans for two success, you do um, notice sort of a buildup and then a dispersion of particles. Uh, something was there and then disappeared. That is when you start to hear the music. One sec oh, while no. Sirenscape switches Why over. is that scarier than a monster? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> We're not playing a board game, are we? Interesting. <laughs> 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 it up. It gets exciting. Can we tell where this is coming from? No, it's just coming from everywhere. Like the speakers? No, just <laughs> or just like it seems ambient. as if there are instruments. Where okay, I'm like scanning around, <laughs> like searching for this. Yeah. And then you're no longer on the Klingon ship. Suddenly, there's grass beneath your feet. Oh, what? What? <laughs> you're on a little bit of a trail. There's a wooden palisade, and ahead you can see several Klingons and several Federation officers all working around various activities. Three strange mineral-like creatures um, seemingly uh, huddled over some plants. And in the back, several Vulcans lounging on long couches. At which point we will go ahead and take our break. <laughs> I'm all so right. confused. Uh, yep. Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're pretty, pretty far for the course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. happening now. <laughs> yeah. This is, what? Okay. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do right now, let's do this. Where is my OBS? Okay. Uh, oops, clean that up a little bit. Uh, we are going to open the giveaway. So, everybody here hanging out in the chat. Uh, we love you. Here comes a giveaway. Um, you just need to type in the word curiosity. One time in the chat, that will get you an entry. Uh, we are drawing three times, and we'll be back in um, five minutes. Let's just do five minutes. It's 9.05, so we're going to be back at 9.10, 8.10 Pacific. Um, everybody stand up, get a drink, back in five. Can we keep the music going? <laughs> yeah,
are, what are those dots? Are We're those back. Those the... Yeah, those are people. Okay. Those are aliens. Those are the the rock people, the mineral people. Yeah, sorry. Minerals, yeah. I didn't count in. Hello, we're live again. Welcome back after that very short break. <laughs> um, we've got three entries in the giveaway, so you know other people hanging out. You got two seconds. One one thousand. Two one thousand. Throw curiosity in there. All right, three people in the giveaway. You're you're each winning a prize today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Yay. the odds were in your favor. Yes. Uh -huh. So we're gonna close the giveaway now. Burp. Okay. First draw is for the twenty-five dollars plus ten dollars. And coffee. Congratulations, yeah. coffee. You have won the big prize this week. You did it. Woo! Excellent screen name. <laughs> and it attend. <laughs> I think I thought you meant that they won coffee, and I was like, oh. "You've won coffee." All right. <laughs> uh, which is okay. also a very fantastic prize. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next winner for ten dollars. I mean, you both get ten dollars. Let's find out who they are. Lilandrius, congratulations, Lilandrius, for ten dollars. And Yay. last one, Alligator Green, congratulations. <gasps> I'm shocked. <laughs> So uh, I will be in touch with you to give you prizes and ways to claim that and so on and so forth. Congratulations. Uh, make sure to come back next week for the super big. Every prize is a big prize. Um, okay. okay. We're back. And there's a small festival going on? Uh... So I guess my first question is, do, do the Federation officers and the Klingons here, do they look like they they feel out of place? Do they, do they yeah. know this is wrong? Are they aware that this is not right? Do they appear to be in danger? <laughs> okay. So, uh, the, uh... Andrew, the, can you read the emotions of the room? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they look Use like they're working skills. very, very hard. Uh, the Federation um, sort of officers are all around a number of easels, and they appear to be trying to do their best to paint some art. Uh, the Klingons all have a number of large knives and seem to be carving ice sculptures. Whereas the uh, third group of these crystalline creatures, um, sort of like dark minerals, uh, as they move, there's sort of like a small bit of a grinding sound, and they've got sort of like uh, mostly featureless faces. They appear to be uh, picking plants and putting them into a salad bowl. Okay. Yeah, can I could I go over and try to speak to the people and determine like what their mental state is? Can I use my psychoanalyst ability? <laughs> Absolutely. We do a quick glance for danger first, just before you enter. Um I'll probably see what you're going. <laughs> yeah. Alright, never go mind. Ahead. <laughs> this is entirely surreal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go right in, and I'm just going to start speaking to them and asking them a bunch of questions. I would like to determine, I'm, I want to I wanna try to determine if they're aware of what's going on or, like, what's going on with their mental state, mm -hmm. if they're if they're sound. Absolutely. So you go in, and uh, who do you speak to? There's uh, There appears to be a, a commander, um, three pips on his collar, right there. Yeah, I will speak to the commander. All right. Um, do I do I know this person, or do they have like a name tag, or do I? <laughs> um, yeah. Let's say that you're familiar with the command staff of the USS Bellerophon, and that's Commander, sure. uh, uh, Commander Thomas. No, command. Yes, Commander Thomas. Commander Wally Thomas. Okay. okay, I will go over and say greetings, Commander Thomas. It is it is wonderful to see you again. It has been too long. I uh, <laughs> I'm I'm curious what it is that you're doing here. <laughs> Um, and so he says, um, forgive me, this is, uh, uh, 
strange situation. Uh, we have apparently been transported to this planet, and we have to please our hosts, or else we are transported elsewhere. And uh, so he sort of moves over uh, to speak with you. And so we'll just move you up. Is everybody else sort of entering? Yeah, I'm going to follow yes. him. I would actually, yeah. yeah, I'd probably follow pretty close behind because I'm also kind of like a communications person, not like a psychologist, but mm -hmm. I might be able to help, maybe. And if I'm... I recognize the commander, I would definitely go to speak to him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing medical scans of everyone that we come across. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, give me a reason medicine. Uh, the difficulty do that. would be a two, but your tricorder drops it to a one. Cool. Uh, can I use my focus in xenobiology? Um, if you're scanning... Yeah, yeah. We'll say that that works. Perfect. Three. Nice. nice. Okay, let's get that um, momentum and threat Ooh. back out there. Uh, so you dropped it to a one, you got three, so you get two momentum. And you can see that... Sweet. Um, the uh, the people seem to be mostly in good health, but some of them are suffering from uh, minor frostbite. Where else have you been? Oh, uh, you mentioned they got transported. So talking to him, do I determine he is, he's completely in control of his medical faculty, faculties, everything is normal, he's just doing what he has to do? Does appear to be. And he would respond to Commander Kitar and say, um... I, uh, we don't know where we've been. It's cold and dark, and there's a creature there. You say you must please this creature. We have to please our hosts, and he kind of puts his hand out towards these uh, several Vulcans in long gold and red and black robes, and you can see one of them sort of moves up and stands by those three aliens who move back and hold out a bowl, and he sort of looks at it, shakes his head and from nowhere you hear a number of boos and displeasure as the music cuts off and the, the three aliens kind of back away and one of them goes as if to run and everything around you flickers oh what happened Oh, I see. Cultists. Hang on, sorry. Um, In the tundra now. <laughs> let's get this to back. There we go. Oh, okay. Okay, we are in the tundra now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, and, uh, the um, the Vulcans are all gone. Uh, the aliens begin to sort of crowd around themselves, and one of the Klingons shouts, "Foolish creatures! You've displeased them!" And uh, they go to sort of like huddle against the wall. One of them has tried to run off and is running by you, but then it drops down to its knees. Kind of sits in the cold. Can I can I attempt to communicate with this creature? Yes, for sure. Universal okay. translator, so you can speak with it. Okay. I I, I kneel down and look at it, and I say. Uh, Greetings, I am an automated neurosynthetic diplomatic relations and empathy unit, but you may refer to me as Andrew. I see that you are uh, experiencing some acute emotional stress, and if uh, not to worry, we have come to assist you, and we, we will be able to sort this whole issue out together. And uh, it kind of stands up and holds itself and looks around and says, I am called Ragna. We do not wish to be detained any longer please are you here to hail to to aid us yes we have come to resolve this this issue this issue that we all seem to be involved in oh. tana is feeling this deep <laughs> being from bajor <laughs> <laughs> and it is cold here very very cold in fact so cold that everybody takes three stress worth of damage. Uh, reduced by resistance. Yes. 
<laughs> Actually, Andrew uh, takes none of it. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. of your poly alloy construction. All right, I am going to attempt. Uh, is there any way that I might be able to help those around me and see if I can uh, aid them in any way by, I don't know, if, if I can find a way to warm people up? If there's like a shelter that could be constructed or any any sort of thing that I can do, I'm not sure. Um, there doesn't appear. Well, there are areas where you can get a break from the wind, so you could gather people okay. under those. Um, okay. So the the things that that were Klingon, uh, sorry, the things that were Vulcans that they were speaking to that they displeased, they're gone right now. They are gone. Okay. Um, I'm going to speak to this, uh, I'm going to speak to uh, Ragna again, and I'm going to say, uh, has, it seems this, this has happened to you before, yes? This coming to this cold place? Uh, sorry, oh, you're speaking to Ragna, yes. Um, yes. Yes. The, uh, when they are not pleased with what we have created, they send us here. Will they be back? I would very much like to speak to them. This is usually um, several minutes, depending on how displeased they were. Uh, can we communicate with the ship? Uh, you tap your comm badge. Do, do, do. Okay. Comms are down. Um, I I would like to start ushering people to where like the wind might be a little bit less. I'll help with that, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, maybe let's gather for warmth. The Starfleet, I... the Starfleet crew will go immediately. The Klingons kind of... Yeah. Can I go speak to the Klingons and uh, appeal to their... Uh, see if I can... Uh, I'd like to go over to them and I, I will say, Greetings, mighty Klingons. <laughs> uh, I am Andrew. I am an automated neurosynthetic diplomatic relations and empathy unit. I can see that... Uh, you are very displeased with the current situation that we are embroiled in, and I, I can sense that there's much hostility between you and these uh, these other life forms. That being said, we are all in this together, and I believe that if we all work together, we will be able to uh, remove ourselves from this situation and get back to our ships and get back to uh, our lives. And so uh, one of the sort of younger... Um very large Klingon man that comes forward and he says, you speak too much Federation. And he brings his hand up to strike you and an older uh, one grabs it and says, bad manners, sukat. And they sort of like stare at each other. And then Can the, I... the, uh, the older one turns towards you and says, we need no help. Can I, um, can I... Because I, I have a specialty in linguistics, so I, I I probably speak Klingon, yeah? Yeah, but I mean, the translators, universal aside. translators are still working. Yeah, you can speak. Okay, I would like to speak in Klingon, though, and I would like to, if I can, um, could, I, could I talk to them about a, bring up any sort of ancient Klingon parable or story about mighty Klingon warriors working together to get out of a bad situation and try to try to appeal to that sense of honor? Yeah, that's interesting. Sure. So, I would say that that's kind of like a hmm. Be insight. Insight would be a good one. I was gonna say presence, but insight is good too. Presence works too. Yeah, presence for sort of like telling the story and and creating that sort of knowledge. Uh, it would be a command, possibly science, if uh, if you're telling like a, a very specific historical story. Sure. Okay. I'll go. So, uh, insight science then. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Um, okay. Difficulty here. I'd say. Would my linguistics a... focus apply? Yes, linguistics focus would apply. I'd say it's probably a three difficulty. Sure. Everybody begins to huddle over here. The crystal creatures don't appear to give off body warmth. Okay. Um, they feel cold though. They do feel cold. Um, could I use one of our momentums? Is that cool? Is there any way to Absolutely. heat one of them up and use them as a hot rock? <laughs> <laughs> All right, set your phaser to kill. <laughs> uh -oh. All right, so I'm going to use one momentum, and I'm going to do the... Hey. Nice. 
Okay, yeah. Ooh, three successes. Did I say the difficulty out loud? Because my brain said a three. Okay, well, there we go. You succeed. So I, I, I eloquently start going in, 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 in Klingon and start telling this story, and my, my demeanor becomes much more a, a aggressive and Klingon-esque as I, as I tell the story. <laughs> and, like, at one point, uh, one of the women... Uh, one of the women sort of moves up beside you and she like tugs on your sleeve and she's looking at it and says, you are synthetic. Yes. <laughs> and and they seem like very interested in you now. And you've, you've seemed to have at least gotten their attention. I want, I want to rally them behind the fact that we have a common... Uh, a common foe or like a common thing that we're working against and then if, if we all band together we can prove how, how mighty we are and that we'll that we'll overcome this obstacle all right and uh, get out of yeah. and under here so we can all be together yes they they do gather and um Good. once we, we're gathered i want to address the group what do you say i say um Thank you, Andrew, for bringing everyone over here. Now that we're gathered, we should use this opportunity, as unpleasant as it is, to figure out, to pool our knowledge. No. Do we know? Vulcans appear to be in charge. Of this being, you said. What else of it? What else can you tell us? So, um, they will say that there is a monster here. There is a monster in the tundra that roars, and they've seen it occasionally, but it has not yet attacked. Um, one the forearms, of, perhaps? Forearms, yes. Mm. Um, one of the Federation crew members, uh, Lieutenant uh, Tapai, is Vulcan, and she says, I do not believe that the entities we are performing for are truly Vulcan. They appear to be facsimiles of some kind. Their robes are reminiscent of an ambassador, but they are identical to each other to the smallest detail. Oh. Hmm. Do you recognize uh, who they're copying as a particular Vulcan ambassador? Alas, I do not. And then you begin to hear the music. Does this usually come before you're transported back? That is correct. Lieutenant Tapai responds. And... Whoop! Prepare yourselves. I'm in the wall! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, <laughs> spikes everywhere! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm dead. I've been impaled. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, well lasted. Um, you come back and you look around, and it seems as if uh, they're not here. There's there's nobody here with you. And then all of a sudden, in the same sort of quick snap that that creature disappeared, the um, uh, Vulcans reappear, and some of them are sitting on chairs, one is leaning on a couch, others are walking around, and you can see all around you various implements, um, painting utensils, music instruments, um, uh, cook pots, uh, various things, and the Klingons immediately uh, turn back to their ice sculpture, and Andrew, who's nearby, can see that they are uh, carving a depiction of Kales, a, a powerful warrior with a large batleth like roaring in victory do you... the federation officers painting yeah, yeah the, what... the painting's not great um it looks like they're working on it uh, as a committee uh, it's it it's probably going to take a lot of time uh, but they get back to it and commander uh, thomas says as far as we can figure out, we're going to have to please them in some way to get out of this. So I suggest you choose an activity. Can I go speak to them? Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say, from afar, does it look like they 
are looking at anything in particular with like favor or like a material that's not being used where they kind of like maybe keep glancing at it or something like I don't know um you can could, I read them basically yeah you could make an <laughs> insight command to try and read them difficulty two okay could I assist with that yeah trying absolutely. to read them the two of you sort of get together and put your heads together and figure that out. Sure. So, Hayden, yeah, you roll one. Single? Single yeah, die? You just roll one to assist. Would this, um, because of my specialty in uh, psychology and psychiatry, would that focus apply? Yes. Ooh, I have psychiatry too. That'd work. <laughs> we just start, like, talking. <laughs> <laughs> You're psychoanalyzing them. I yeah. actually do have a specialty. I have a specific ability for psychoanalyst. Um... When I use, oh, if I'm using medicine discipline during social con uh, conflict. Yeah, basically you can, um, like, deal damage to somebody and make them, like, agree with you or do what you want in a social conflict. But there's an increased challenge. Um, well, you know, it it's talks about how I can gain additional information from analyzing someone. Oh, I guess I'm, that's I'm thinking oh, the other one. Yeah, when you when I use medicine during social conflict, I can increase the complication range of my task by a number of steps. For each step, I can ask a single question as if I had spent momentum. Cool. So, do you want to do um, uh, Tana assisting Andrew then? Sure. And then Andrew makes an insight medicine. Okay. Sure. Sure. So and I guess. And so can I, I can increase the complication range and gain additional questions for free? Correct. Okay. I guess I'll increase it by one. Okay. <laughs> so a complication will happen on a 19 or 20. So Sharia, sure. you go ahead and roll one die. One dice. Am I using my focus then? Or yes. no? Okay. Ooh. Hey. Nice. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Two successes. So um, the difficulty is two. And so, Hayden, you get to roll. Uh, there's one Ooh. momentum in the pool. What do we get? Three we get successes. We our knowledge. Whoa. Five okay. successes. Five successes oh, total because of the um, whatnot. <laughs> and so that's three momentum in your pool. And I get an additional question. Absolutely. So first, the success. Um, they do appear to uh, glance in the direction of the, um, the instruments. It seems as if uh, they are disappointed that uh, nobody has attempted to entertain them through music. Um, are they reacting? Go ahead. Are they reacting separately or as a single cohesive unit? As a single cohesive unit, as you're looking at them, they do appear to just be representations of one particular entity. Okay. Um, and so... Mm. The commander of the Federation vessel is here. I forget his name. Uh, um, yeah, Commander Thomas. Commander Thomas. I asked him if he's if he, was he the one who saw the entity, the other entity that there was that was mentioned. Uh, no, he'll say that that was uh, Petty Officer uh, Shazathith, the Andorian uh, woman right here. Right. I'd All like right. to ask her to describe him. Oh, uh, the entity that she saw was the four-armed entity. ape. Oh, okay, oh. sorry. All right, so I, I, I get one question, though, right? Yes. Okay, I'm just trying to... Okay, while you're thinking of that, what are uh, Mizra and Garak doing? Um... Honestly, I'm going to be trying to subtly scan them, the, the Vulcans. You don't get anything. They don't appear to be there. Mm. So they're just being projections of something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, God, I just want to speak to this thing. I'm just trying to determine... Can I determine what the best way to communicate with it would be? No, just talking to it or 
trying to make it happy. But I mean, like approach. Can I can oh. I determine a specific approach that I think based on just looking at them? Supplication, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's all right. And so, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna confer with my with my associate. Uh, sorry, Tana. Right. Yes. Cool. Okay. Can I, I interrupt I for a very quick second? Yes. Yeah, what's going on? If, if there's a result, I, I can do what uh, Garak's up to afterwards, but if the result of this communication is that we get beamed somewhere, I've been busy in the meantime. Okay. We can get back to what I've been busy with after, but I just want to plant that out. I'm doing something. Sounds good. Okay. Um. Yeah, I... Um, it seems to me that uh, this has the potential of being an endless loop. I think the only way to break it would be to speak to these and attempt to uh, attempt to speak to whatever this entity is directly. This seems to be some sort of holographic projection or or other form of um, immaterial presence. I agree. I I think communication here might be incredibly important. All right. Um, can I try to? Can I go over and try to speak to the one of the Vulcan entities? Yep. Okay. I will come as well. Great. Thank you. All right. So we make our way over, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to them, and I'll say, "Greetings. It seems that you are the uh, the master in charge of this particular uh, environment that we are currently finding ourselves in. Um, I see that you are interested in being entertained. I wonder to what um, to what goal to what end what is it that you are seeking in this entertainment we want to see how well you can perform to what end experiment ah interest interested in in new information it seems i understand the, the pursuit myself your lives are strange to me i have come to gather more information you may call me nagilam so this mm -hmm. is the same entity yeah i'm gonna kind of like nudge you and, and quietly just kind of say well before he, they wanted to see all the ways we could die now i think they want to see all the ways we can perform it seems you have come in contact with uh, with our people before I trust you remember your uh, encounter with the USS Enterprise. There was a parting exchange with the captain. He Indeed. said we shared common ground. I agreed. Curiosity. It got the better of me. I I respect and uh, and uh, approve of your interest in knowledge and uh, and accumulation of uh, new experiences. I must say, however, there is the the current situation that you are experiencing is is not authentic. This is not the proper way of uh, understanding our people peoples and our culture. If you have interest in us, we would be more than happy to to relay that information and communicate with you more directly. However, when you are forcing us into uh, an unfamiliar and um, uncomfortable situation, you are not going to get the information that you're seeking. An interesting point. Nevertheless, sterile conditions are required for repeated experiments. If I may, I... Yeah. I, when I saw you go up and talk to uh, Vulcans, I would have gone away from what I was yeah. currently doing and joined in on the conversation. Um, if your intention is to experiment here, you're actually tainting the experiment by punishing us for the results. If you're trying to see what everyone's able to create with everything at hand, it, how everyone's able to form for you in different art forms by punishing everyone when you're not pleased with what they provide that's going against the results of the experiment the experiment is showing what we're able to do we're showing you what we're able to do negative stimuli 
has shown to be an effective motivator for lower creatures. Positive so is stimuli could perhaps be introduced. I have a lot of studies that I've read that positive reinforcement is actually better than negative reinforcement. I will, I will actually, jump in and I will, I will agree and I will begin explaining some, <laughs> several studies that we've been involved with. <laughs> Uh, and so the Vulcan will kind of listen, and uh, in the back the Klingons uh, begin to sort of fight amongst themselves as one of them cut a little bit too deeply. Um, and then Nagilam, the Vulcan, will put their hand up and just say, This information will be collated with all of the investigations. Nevertheless, this experiment is not yet finished. How would you produce your best art to satisfy? Um, well, uh, I will say, um, I am different from these other beings that you have uh, found in this place. I am I am a artificially created uh, sentient intelligent uh, intelligence. That being said, my my database is capable of storing a large amount of, of information. And in, in my in my studies, I have uh, obtained numerous cultural stories from many different uh, races and species throughout the galaxy. I would be happy to regale you with many different tales if this would sage your curiosity. Um, and so they sort of gesture and uh, there is a chair for each of you and you can sit and uh, tell a story <laughs> is anybody going to help or uh, um, aid in some manner oh and actually oh, before man. we go back to that uh, Ross what was Garak doing um, I see that there are some fire pits here. Am I correct in assuming assuming that there is some sort of a firewood pile somewhere? There is. Is there kindling at that firewood pile? There is. I would have been trying to retrieve some sort of a sack or cloth that I could use as a sack and pile it full of kindling and sling it around my shoulder. Okay, you have a sack of kindling over your shoulder. Fantastic. All right. <laughs> uh, Chekhov's kindling. Um, okay, uh, so uh, Andrew is apparently settling down to tell an interesting story. What is everybody else doing? I will probably assist with that, being that we have similar strengths, so... I could try to assist. Okay. Uh, what are Commander Kitar and Dr. Bars doing? I will probably come over and at least listen, if not try and help out with the story. Yeah, Sounds I think it's my duty here to my duty here to help out my, my crew members, so I'm going to help with the story. Okay. So, what type of story uh, does Andrew choose? Sorry, do you, do you, you tap are coming over to help? Those? You are coming over to help? Okay, uh, based on that, I'm going to tell a... I'm going to tell a interesting story about the... the war between the Klingons and the humans, and tell about how that came to an end and they found understanding in each other and some even uh grew to have deeper relationships gesturing to my half human half klingon uh 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 commander commander yeah exactly um and yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna tell a story about that okay that's cool yeah um how are other people helping 
adding It's not my team. strong suit. I don't know. I'm like an you're, athletic you're, person. You're, you're, your very presence is, is providing it. As the as the Klingon, you as one of the Klingons, no. you can act it out. I'm <laughs> gonna do it. <laughs> Put your hands together. Do the star starfleet yeah. of fighting. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. You could be either a, you could act out as a human or a Klingon, yeah. and you know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I will use my focus in diplomacy to be the uh, MC. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and and narrator. I I'm gonna provide sound effects. <laughs> Ooh, so in this situation, let's open it up to everybody. So, um. Andrew is going to do the main role, and you'll roll last, but everybody can um, assist with a single die and explain how you want to do it. So, um, with Commander Kitar, uh, what are you... Say again, what are you doing? I mean, I'm using my physical prowess to kind of, like, act out what's going on and stuff. So I think that would be, like, can I use, like, fitness and... I don't know, command for that? I love it. Yes, you're doing... <gasps> um, uh, it could be fitness command or it could be daring command to do, like, uh, you know... Okay, daring physical, command, yeah. Daring. Physical feats to be, like, the battle of this, yeah. but then this. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I'm one adding die. drama. <laughs> one die? Okay. Yes, one die. <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, okay, so that is one momentum there. Um, uh, Alex, what is Dr. Misra doing? Uh, so I will use my presence staging. Um, and then can I say I'm using my science because I can use my knowledge to make very precise and intricate descriptions of how everything plays out. Probably interesting things, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Uh, I like yeah. it. Ah, it was not enough. Okay. That's, that's all right. Okay. That's a 20. So we've got one momentum oh. added. Oh, it's a 20. Okay. It is a complication. Sure is. Oh, no. Okay. Is there so a way to avoid complications? There is. You can choose to add two threat to the threat pool instead of taking an immediate complication. Is that better? I think that's better. It is better um, because it would... Uh, be a potential increase of difficulty later, as opposed to me saying you've displeased them and hated yeah, them. Yeah, let, let, let's, <laughs> let's take it on down the line. Okay, uh, so threat goes back up to ten. Um, what is Garak doing? Um, are there is there any kind of like food or beverage or anything around? Yes, they have like. Uh, you know, they have charcuterie boards uh, with like some nice <laughs> sparkling wine. Yes. Like there's some food uh, and lots of like finger food right there. Um, yep. I'm I'm going to act as host. I'm gonna like bring around oh, I love uh, it. food and beverage to serve to the various nagilas and. Uh, get our really there, but it's part of the after the, after the fact. I'll like bring some to the rest of uh, of the audience here with the Klingon and the humans, but Nagila first. Okay, I like it. Cool. Uh, go ahead. Um, what do you think? I'm thinking like a presence command. Let's do it. All right. So one die. Oh my God! Are you serious? I needed a 15, I rolled a 16. Oh, okay. No. That's all right. Uh, I mean, they're you still enjoying it. it. It's just not, uh, you know. Actively helping. Actively helping. In a mechanic kind of way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tana Sewell. Yeah. Making um, sound effects. Making sound effects. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing that would be presence. Yeah. 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 Okay. Presence and then. I don't, I don't know what it would be for discipline. Uh, I'm thinking, could I use, like, my focus in anthropology? Like, knowing, like, things about... I don't know. Interesting. Like, you could... <laughs> hmm. So, 
you could use a, um, a focus in anthropology if hmm, if your sound effects were definitely I don't know very Klingon based I guess I don't know yeah like I was, I was kind of thinking like I could mix in with just normal sound effects like the sound effects of like um, I don't know like battle and like some Klingon words and things like people shouting in the background like oh, yeah I'm totally just picturing kind of the <laughs> C-3PO uh, speaking yes! to the Ewok yes <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> That's exactly it. It's usually not, not the not the robot. <laughs> Seems okay. maybe, maybe there are some like specific sound effects from Klingon operas and stuff like oh, that that yeah. you're like oh. Yeah, hey, Klingons like actually <laughs> use this in their theatrical and performances. I'm gonna add that in. I love it. There you go. It's an allusion to Klingon literature. That's you your go. anthropology yes. focus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then presence science. Okay. <laughs> So a cool. single D20. Single D20. Ah, no. Oh, okay. So we've got one momentum from the aid, and we have four momentum in the pool. Uh -huh. So uh, the difficulty for this... Spend after, it. After all... Yeah, absolutely spend it. After all this conversation and so on, the difficulty is a three, because you've dropped it by a couple of steps. Um, okay. So you've got your basic two dice. Uh... We've got momentum in the pool that can allow you to buy two additional dice. I'll do that. Okay, two so that spends yeah. three momentum from the pool. Um, I gotta, I gotta fix that so that players can change the momentum pool, but we'll do that later. Okay, so you're at four dice. Um, oh, sorry, we could, mm, we could change that up a little bit. Do you have a value that would apply to this? I believe I do. Uh, intelligent life must work together for mutual survival. That's perfect. <laughs> so you could, <laughs> yeah. you could spend a determination to buy your first die that's already rolled a one. I will do that. I will spend my determination. Okay. So then you can spend two momentum to buy a fourth die, and you'll be rolling three dice. Sure. So, so roll three dice. I already have two successes. That's correct. And my fo and my uh, we're using are we using my focus on this? Yeah. What's your focus yeah. for it? Uh, well, I mean, it could be I don't know linguistics or psychology. Psychology. I think okay. that'd be the psychology. Closest. All right. So I need one success. Yep. On three dice. All one right. Success on three dice. And which which ones am I rolling? Um. Oh yes. Science. Rolling. I thought you said present science. Yeah, it was present yeah, science. Present science. science. Hey! Nice! Four. Whoa, didn't even need it all. So you got six. Successes. six successes, which brings it to <laughs> seven successes. And um, uh, with the difficulty of three, you've got four momentum. Uh, you Find fill the there we go. pool up. Whoa! And it is an epic performance. <laughs> you hear just behind suddenly cheers and clapping. And Nagilam just smiles. Like panting a little bit from all this exertion and like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like massaging my throat like... Those authentic Klingon sounds don't feel so good. And Nagilam <laughs> nods and says, My experiments are at an end. With proper encouragement and training, your species may unlearn your aggressiveness. May unlearn your hostility. Peace could... Peace could be a distant future for you. This is my wish as well. At which point, everything around you fades. You can still just dimly hear the clapping, but you find yourselves back on the bridge of... The USS Artemis. Back on our ship. Back on your ship. Okay. And as you look, Can we like. Yeah, go ahead. Do a sensor check if yeah. things are reading properly now. Let's see. We got one, two. I'm missing one, two, three, four. Just like, hi, Captain. <laughs> I'd also like to do Captain a bit of a. Try and hail the other ships now. Yeah. 
And uh, you you check the sensors, and the Nagilum's sort of void of space is gone. Um, the let's go to there. Um, the other ships uh, are opening hailing frequencies. Uh, the USS Bellerophon um, begins to trade logs and you've successfully apparently appeased this cosmic entity Yay! Yay! Well, good. I'm, I'm gonna look at everyone and I'll say this was uh, this was a, a most uh, most glorious success I, I appreciate everyone's assistance in this yes uh, my, my 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 belief in the in, in the uh, abilities of, of organic life when we all work together is it's as true as ever. <laughs> All right. Well, good game, everybody. Yeah. Hey. Good game. That was fun. Good. That was fun. I'm so confused, and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, like, are the other 290 people from the other ship, are they okay, too? Yes, everybody <laughs> yeah. is okay. They were just held in some sort of extra-dimensional so stasis. People are like, what do we do now? Oh, no. no. Um, yeah, so uh, that was our um, episode, The Missing. Um, and so super exciting because next week we are opening the doors of the darkest house. So although this is a, a West Marches style where the players get to choose what they're doing, next week there's only one choice. Nice. We are going to be delving into the Monty Cook Games uh, uh, product, The Darkest House, which is a, a horror-based uh, online tool and story with lots of props and super cool stuff and mysteries. I like a good spook. Yeah. So, uh, for everybody watching, come back next week at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. There's going to be three big giveaway packages, which will be super sweet. And, um... Yeah, I guess that's it. Anybody have anything they want to say as we uh, sign off for the night? Goodbye! Goodbye! Bye, kitty! Alright, thank you. Is for the you. game, Eric? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. Thanks to everyone. That was yeah. super fun. Go team! Go team! Team Thanks, make the everyone. dream work! Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Okay, good night. We're off to credits. <laughs> good night. Good night. Okay. Bye. It is.